Yeah, we have a team of nine people here at Eucision working on audio technology and also machine learning more generally. Since we are using a, like a real musical instrument as a game controller in our app, it is indeed like totally crucial that it does work and we can somehow recognize what the user does on let's say guitar fretboard or piano keyboard because this is what is used to let's say achieve things in the app and control it and achieve points if we view it as a game or something and in order to make it work we just have to like try it out with a lot of different conditions and different test material and training training data and so forth and what makes it hard is that the instruments that people have they don't sound quite the same so there are differences like how the strings of the guitar the make and mark of those and special acoustics of the body of the instrument and then there is the like devices that people use so even the like acoustics of the microphones can then differ and the noise conditions somebody has tv on or somebody's playing in a classroom and all that like brings a huge variety and and it shouldn't fail. The users use uh, a lot of different types of devices. We have a different operating system. And uh, the problem is that uh, each of these devices uh, work with different technologies. And uh, that's why we built our own uh, audio engine to be able to work seamlessly across all these devices. And having our own uh, audio engine allows us to be more flexible and implement different type of features. For example, we have our own audio synthesizers already embedded in the app. So when you play your guitar and it's connected to your phone, you don't need an external piece of equipment to play that audio back into your headphones, but we can have the application doing it for you. We want to be able to tell how close in time you are to the perfect beat of the song. And for doing so, we need the very precise latency compensation because the audio has to travel through the air if you are using an acoustic guitar. Uh, so something which is not directly plugged into your device. And for that, we need to calibrate the instrument with what the user is seeing from the screen. And uh, there aren't at the moment uh, a framework that uh, allowed this to do this as precisely as we need it so that we can better give feedback to the users for how precise they are in their playing. What is actually really exciting, it's not that you really program the computer to do a thing, like there is this rule. Let's take an example. You want to have your computer recognize chairs. Is that a chair or is it not a chair? So instead of programming that it has to have four legs, it has to have a seating height roughly and so on, instead you show examples. You show it, yeah, here's a typical kitchen chair, here's an arms chair, here's a wheelchair, here's a bar stool or something. And after seeing a lot of these examples, then the machine itself figures it out. And that is super powerful. And yeah, it's uh, even uh, to the point of being surprising how complex things a computer can learn just based on data. And this is what we also leverage, let's say, or use in our app, of course. So even more important than the kind of fancy models that we build is that we have some examples to show to the computer. And when we started as a company, that was like 10 years ago, roughly, it was still this classical machine learning where we learn some statistics. Then we kind of build on top of those. But Nowadays, it's increasingly based on neural networks and this deep learning stuff where it's almost like a black box <laughs> that you show examples to it. And in the end, hopefully, it has learned like this was correct playing. Also, this was correct playing. This is a C major chord, but you can also play it like this. Please accept that as well. And here's a certain mistake. Don't accept that. Here's another kind of mistake. This should be labeled as wrong as well. And then, yeah, after having plenty of those examples, then we hope that the model is kind of constructed itself inside the computer and, and then it, it's starting to recognize what the users do. Then the kind of the developers working on this problem kind of focus their efforts more on simulating different devices that users might have, simulating the instruments that users might have, 
and coming up with noise conditions and then adding those to the material that we kind of consume and that we test with. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs>